Hey everyone, welcome to DIY Declassified. I want you to say goodbye to that fear and that anxiety that comes with tackling your everyday DIY projects because here, I'm gonna show you how to conquer them all. Hey everybody, today we're gonna get started on our railing. There's a couple options that you have. You could do a wood railing on the side, composite railing that you could do, PVC railing you could do. We ended up going with aluminum. And the reason we did that is it's sharp. We don't have to deal with any wood or anything like that. Really, it, it just comes down to functionality. Um, you kind of have to take a look at what your budget is, what you want, the look, the style, the feel. And with that, we ended up coming down to aluminum. We went with a company called AFCO. The reason I picked AFCO, um, price point was one of them. It has this good sleek look to it. Um, it has a, a kind of a modern design. They ended up doing a powder coating that's on there. So you don't get a lot of fingerprints and everything. Prior to putting in your decking, you need to decide what kind of railing you plan to put in, as some require you to put in 4x4 wooden posts or install additional back blocking and framing. For this deck, I have chosen to install bolt-in posts. This requires I put in blocking for the posts to be screwed into. During the framing phase of your project, you need to locate where your posts will be mounted. I screwed together two boards giving me a 3 inch thick piece for my bolts to bite into. I took this 3 inch block, placed it between two of my beams, and screwed them in from the outside. This will allow me to place my posts right on top using sturdy bolts I can mount the posts to a deck. Unfortunately, one of my posts landed right in the middle of a beam. Not really a huge issue, I just had to put blocking in on both sides to support it. So to put this in, I'm actually just using some GRKs. Um, these are not special order screws. You can just pick these up at your you know, hardware store. Any local place should have these kinds of things. They're pretty robust, hardy screws. Um, I'm gonna put these in all four corners and this is what we'll be holding our posts in. So when we're out here and we're going to mount this thing, I recommend having one of these. It's great. It keeps all of your diameters exactly the same, all your measurements and everything. Um, and so I'm keeping this at two and three quarter away from the edge on all edges here. And so this is how I'm doing it, just to make sure that everything is completely square. I line up my posts so they sit in the middle between two boards. This helps keep all my posts on line and the rail lines up right above the gap between the two boards. Once I have my posts lined up exactly where I want it, I mark where my bolts will go, then pre-drill all of my holes and screw in the bolts. Now I'm not putting them in all the way because there's one thing that's very important. You gotta make sure that this is square. So when we were putting these on our six by six post when we were doing it, these come in really handy to put these up. Now I can see whether this thing's level or not. And then you're gonna take your shims. I recommend getting composite shims and not wood shims because um, these will last where the wood ones won't. So I can start putting in these little plugs here. And now that we got the post installed, you can go ahead and throw the skirt on there. It'll hide those bolts. Be careful as you put the skirt on though, you may end up scraping off the powder coat if you're not careful. Once I had two corner posts in, I measured from post to post, then dividing it by three, which would give me the distance between each post as I'm putting four actual posts here. From there, I just repeated the steps to installing the post. Once the posts were in, I started working on the rails. I had to cut all of my rails down a few inches, which can be done on your miter saw as long as you have a blade that can cut non-ferrous material. One thing to keep in mind, you can't just cut off one end. Whatever you have to cut off, divide it by two and cut the equal amount from each side. If you don't do this, you risk having a baluster four inches from the post on one side and maybe one inch from the other. By doing it in this way, you ensure that your balusters are completely centered all the way across. Then you just jam your balusters in. The hardest part in this really was aligning the balusters with the other rim. The way AFCO made these, the balusters fit in really tight. After they're all installed, I expected there to be some kind of play when shaking the balusters, but really, they are in there tight. So if you choose to use AFCO, I highly, highly suggest that you pay for their template plate, okay? This saves so much time in measuring and coming up with your own little jigs and all that other fun stuff to make sure that your holes are on exact, okay? They've got the grooves on here where you could put it on this side for a three inch post or flip it around for your four inch post, okay? And it fits on there perfect. So in doing the bottom plate, 
you end up putting this on and those bottom uh, brackets, it just fits right into this piece, okay? And then you just take your drill bit, but you're gonna hold it up and get it flush to the top. Remember, without the cap, flush to the top. And then you're gonna use those to mark the holes. Okay, I strictly just use it to mark it. And then once that's in there, now that the holes are drilled where they need to be, we can install the brackets that hold the railing system. With the AFCO aluminum railing, you will install the top bracket first to set your built railing into. Before installing your railing though, make sure to slide the bottom bracket on first. There is also a sleeve that needs to slide on the top rail before you install. This sleeve is what will hide the bracket from the top. Once the railing is set in place, there is a screw that goes under the bracket to secure it in place. Then move to the bottom and secure those brackets. Now just sit back and enjoy the view from the back of my head. Moving to the stairs, they are performed in the same manner. You just build the railing and rack it to one direction and the railing will drop to the necessary angle. If you choose to go with AFCO, I highly recommend you use the pivot brackets for your railing. The template I mentioned earlier has the identified holes to make installing these just as easy as the others. After many weekends, countless hours in the sun, thousands of dollars in supplies, I have finally completed this project. This being the first project in our new house, I really love how it turned out, and it makes me very excited to share all of our projects going forward. All right, everybody, thank you for watching this series on, on how to build the deck. It's been great, it's been fun, it's taken a lot of work and a lot of time to do, but I'm telling you, if you do it right from the get-go, it will last for years, and you and your family will be able to enjoy it for a long, long time. If you guys like this channel and you want to keep supporting me, make sure that you hit like and subscribe below. It's completely free to you, and it allows me to continue to provide you fresh, great content. So, until next time, see ya!